Throughout the Zelda series, there has been one main villain who has crept his way into most titles. One who possesses one third of the Triforce, the Triforce of Power. This being the Gerudo man known as Ganondorf. Before becoming the Demon King Ganon, we know him for. All titles that feature him have him as a final boss fight. But which Ganon boss fight is the best? Well, throughout our past adventures, we have faced him again and again. So it's time to count down the top 5 best Ganon boss fights within the series. Number 5 Breath of the Wild's Ganon battle is far different than any before. Kalimni Ganon is the evil of what's left of Ganon. The threat that continued to haunt Hyrule for thousands of years is now reduced to a mindless beast that knows nothing more but destruction. What humanity was once left of the Gerudo King of Thieves has vanished and retained its evil. Ganon this time around has lost his senses and wants nothing more but to destroy Hyrule. And that shows in the battle itself. Here we go, it's finally time to face Calamity Ganon, and well, here we go, alright, so I managed to get a flurry rush on him, and this is my chance to land as many strikes as I can. He attacks recklessly during his first phase with similar attacks that his Phantom Ganons used, with all four elements of fire, wind, water, and thunder in one. But with the help of the four champions and their divine beasts, if completed their quests, he will be struck by them, leaving him at half HP. But if you attempt to face Calamity Ganon without rescuing all four champions and taming the Divine Beasts, you'll be forced to fight each Blight Ganon before facing Calamity Ganon himself, also leaving him with full HP for his first phase. But if you manage to get past each of his phantoms and the actual battle itself, Calamity Ganon isn't too hard. Yes, the Divine Beasts took half of Calamity Ganon's HP, and now we must finish off with the rest. So. That's one huge benefit in finishing all four dungeons, but not only that, we also have all of the champion abilities, and both the Rook's Protection and Urbosa's Fury do really well against Calamity Ganon. Now, I don't want to use them per se, we can easily parry him like this, and also attack him, uh, you know, knock him down and just go ham. Overall, with the Master Sword, it's so easy. I know a lot of people kind of dislike it because they say this boss battle is just way too easy for like the final boss of Breath of the Wild. Such a big game and well, uh, okay, let's use, yeah, Daruk's protection to knock him down. This is a good example of how it's so much easier with these champion abilities and we're already on the final phase, but my point is this boss is pretty tough when you have no resources and then you go through the game, you get so much stronger and you come back and now as you can see, yes, he is pretty much uh, invulnerable when he has this weird orange aura on him, but if we're able to deflect an attack of his, even with the Rook's protection, that will knock him down. So let's go ahead and do a flurry rush. Also, when he does attack, he becomes vulnerable for a couple, for like a millisecond, so that's another chance to attack. There are many ways to dispose of this guy. With perfect timing, everything is a breeze. But especially with the champion abilities on top of it, Link makes quick work of Ganon in little time. For Hyrule's biggest threat, he seems like a complete joke, as a Lionel would put on a far better challenge. So, hip! And well, Calamity Ganon, eat this. Bye. But after finishing him off, with the power he has left, he emerges from the bottom of Hyrule Castle onto Hyrule Field and rampages his way throughout it, destroying everything he can before falling. He barely even puts on a fight as he's trying to destroy everything in his path, knowing his fate will repeat itself again, to be sealed away by Hyrule's princess. Seeing Ganon in this state makes you realize how many times his spirit has been through this. His mind has dwindled and no longer thinks rationally. All he knows is destruction, and he will do whatever it takes to fulfill that. Luckily, with the help of Zelda, Link and the Bow of Water are able to take him down and defeat him again. Oh, so it's time to face the Dark Beast Ganon, but before, let's pick up the Bow of Light. Yes, Princess Zelda gave you this bow and arrow for the battle with Dark Beast Ganon. When wielded by the hero, it fires pure light, strong enough to oppose the Calamity. Oh, this is it! So, this is the final blow. Once... The time is right, and you see the eye, you know what to do! Well, Calamity Ganon, or Dark Beast Ganon, you've been pierced! While this was a hundred years too late, Ganon will never escape the cycle he has cursed Hyrule with. So while this is one of the easiest battles within the series, it makes sense why. At this point, Ganon is nothing more but evil trying to spread itself. 
a fate after over 10,000 years of repeating itself. Number four. The Wind Waker battle against Ganon takes place in what's left of Hyrule, far beneath the surface, in a world where Hyrule was flooded to prevent Ganon from rising once again. And thanks to the Hero of Wind and Hyrule's princess, this Ganon was killed off probably for good, but at the sake of losing the kingdom of Hyrule alongside it. The battle starts off against Puppet Ganon, a terrifying vision of himself that seems to be toying with Link. And here we are against Puppet Ganon. Can I just say what? What is this? What the heck? <laughs> like, come on. I don't know, the first time I saw this when playing the game, I was in complete shock. Like, what kind of freaking boss is this? It is the most freaking crazy looking boss. Somehow I managed to avoid him trying to slack me in the face there. But, yes, here we are against Puppet Ganon. I'll be honest, overall this boss is fairly easy, like, in gimmick. But I would say just to execute what you're going to be trying to do is fairly hard, and I didn't mean to do that, but okay. Oh, this is my chance before it goes back up. If you wait too long, it will actually fly up and regenerate its strings, just like that, actually. Kind of called it as I was going to cut off the last rope, but it's fine. Hit it. There we go. All right. First phase down. It looked like... That was it, but no, there's a lot more to it, actually. Like I said, there are three phases, so Link is all happy and dancing and whatnot, but no, there's more. I like how the, the victory music changes into another boss theme. It's freaking hilarious how that works. Uh, and sadly, yeah, they don't work! Yes! We did it! Not bad. But by using Link's arsenal found throughout his adventure, the puppet is no match for him. So Ganon escapes to the top of the room to face Link in a final battle. I hate to break the mood, but what the frick? Ganon can fly? What the heck? Yeah, I, I, okay. At first, Link stands no chance against Ganon. With him realizing Link carries the Triforce of Courage, and with Zelda having the Triforce of Wisdom and Ganon having the Triforce of Power, he is able to assemble the complete Triforce and make his long-lasting wish. But as he's about to do that, the King of Hyrule, also Link's trusty bow, the King of Red Lions, stops Ganon and wishes upon the Triforce himself, wishing for a future for Link and Zelda, along with the Kingdom of New. So with what was left of his current kingdom started to drown, as Link and Zelda got up to face Ganon. Alright, and here we are in the final battle against Ganon! Alright, so I'll use the bow to cover you! Attack him as best as you can! Hooray, Zelda! So we are teamed up with Zelda! The battle consists of swordplay versus Link and Ganon, with Zelda trying to help with her bow of light. But with Ganon's skills, he's able to avoid Zelda's attacks, not giving her a chance to strike. So now Zelda is down, no good. Let's go ahead and get on with it. So now what we need to do is we need Ganon to do this three type of attack strike, where we'll be able to parry him in return. And once we do that, Zelda should come back up. So Link must trick Ganon and have Zelda aim with the light arrow onto his mirror shield to reflect the attack on Ganon and strike him with it. And now it's time to end the battle pretty much. So yes, this battle may have been very, very epic and everything, but guys, here we go. Just be patient, wait for Zelda to aim the freaking thing at you, you face at Ganon. Go ahead and press A at the final moment and well, Ganon, you've been stabbed! Yeah, yeah giving him a chance to drive the blade into his skull, turning him into stone, leaving him along with the Master Sword as they float up to surface, saying goodbye to the Old Kingdom and its king. Number 3 A Link Between Worlds as Ganon is an interesting take on the Demon King. Knowing from his past mistakes that his power isn't enough, he teams up with Yuga, using their powers together to attempt to face Hyrule's hero. Alright, and here we go against 
Yuga Ganon! It's not necessarily Yuga because he's like merged in with Ganon, but uh, from what I remember, this fight is actually really easy because you can block most of his attacks with your shield. But with that also not being enough, they go against LaRue's princess, Hilda, and use her powers alongside them, merging the three into one, making Yuga Ganon Hilda, or you Gilda? For Yuga priding himself with beauty, this form is absolutely hideous. But so is his normal form, so that doesn't say much. Okay, guys, get ready for... Yuga Ganon Hilda, I guess. I mean, what else would I call him? But even with how desperate Ganon has become, he's still no match against the hero. Using Zelda's guidance, Link is given the Bow of Light to help defeat Ganon once more. But similar to before, Ganon won't fall that easily. So yeah, all we're gonna need is our arrows. And we gotta go up to him, shoot one at him, and then you're gonna realize he's gonna be blocking it, so you wanna quickly run in and shoot one in his butt instead, because he can't block that, of course. But there we go, now back to the volleyball match. Oh yeah, we're going downtown and hitting a ball. I don't, I don't really know what I'm trying to sing right now, but okay. Let's, just, <laughs> let's end this from Yuga Ganon Hilda. I love the way he looks in his painted form. So to trick Ganon this time, Link must use the power bracelet to merge himself onto the wall and shoot the light arrow the opposite way to strike Ganon delivering the final blow. Here! Oh no, he's blocking it! What about this? <laughs> yeah, it goes all the way around and this is how you're supposed to do it. One more time in the butt will send him flying and now with the blade of evil's bane you've been, you've been stabbed, stabbed or sliced or, sli or whatever. Utilizing the wall merging mechanic within this battle makes the fight so much more unique. As in most top-down Zelda games, you take on Ganon in a similar fashion, with having to use power balls back and forth and find his weak points. But in Link Between Worlds, it finds another way to add a new mechanic that fits within the battle. Overall, making this one of my favorite battles against Ganon, and by far my favorite for a top-down Zelda game. Number 2 The first Ganon battle is within Ocarina of Time. While Ganon was the final boss battle in Zelda 1, with it being the first Zelda game within the series, in the game's timeline, Ocarina of Time was Ganon's first appearance. Being the one Gerudo male that was born in that century, he plotted to take over Hyrule and claim the Triforce for his own. With Link chosen to stop him, he ends up helping Ganon on his mission when trying to claim the Master Sword. While the Master Sword is the blade needed to seal him, it is also the key to the Sacred Realm, giving Ganon the chance to claim the Triforce of Power and take over Hyrule. After seven years, Link awakens as the Hero of Time, and uses the Sages' power to defeat him. The battle takes place in Ganon's Tower, once known as Hyrule Castle before reclaimed by Ganon. The setting leading to it with the plenty of stairs truly feels like a final battle. With Ganon playing the organ as it gets louder and louder until Link enters, awaiting for him. The first phase has him play volleyball with Link. So I'm going to be using the bottle for now just so I can demonstrate it. And if you keep uh, deflecting it back at Ganondorf, he will miss his turn. Okay, not now. He will miss his turn eventually. One day. Okay, there we go. And then you can hit him with a light arrow. The only way to do it is with a light arrow. And when he falls down you can deal some attacks. And uh, honestly, the Bagoran Sword is the easiest uh, weapon to use to deflect these light balls because it has so much range that you can hit it really early on before it gets close to you and just make sure you're deflecting the light ball. Okay, let's go ahead and deal some more attacks. Come on, I want to do spin attacks. There we go, and we have completed it. Along with the power of light arrows as usual, Link is able to reduce Ganon to have no other option but to attempt to take down everything within the castle along with him. You better be quick or you will be crushed within the castle. Luckily with Link and Zelda managing to escape, Ganon fails. But he is not done yet. He awakens and morphs into his pig-like form that was shown from the very first Zelda 1. From a Gerudo man known as Ganondorf, to becoming the Demon King we know him for, Ganon. This is the true final battle, and we don't have a Master Sword with us. It's not like I even had it out, I had the Bagoran Sword, so uh, you know what? I don't care. This battle takes place upon the crumbled remains of the castle. During the battle, Link loses his Master Sword and is unable to claim it until Ganon is dropped on his knees. Alright, if you don't hurry, the Ring of Fire will reappear, and uh, you will have to hit him a couple times for him to get down on his knees again. 
But now that we have the Master Sword, make sure you keep the Master Sword out. You don't want to switch back if you have a Begoron Sword like me. And then you start attacking him again and do the exact same thing. We can roll under his feet to attack him. I mean, you know, whatever floats your bow. Um, and if he does hit you like that, don't worry. It does do some damage, but usually rolling under his feet is good enough. Once given the chance to obtain it again, with the help of Zelda and the Sages, Link delivers the final blow to Ganon with the Master Sword. Ganon, you've been stabbed! Sealing him into the Sacred Realm. Number 1 In the timeline where the events of Ocarina of Time don't take place, with Zelda sending Link back into time to prevent Ganon from ever taking over Hyrule, he is set to be executed. But the sages fail in doing so, resulting in Ganon returning into Hyrule during the Twilight Era. Having teamed up with Zant, he is able to get his hands on the princess and use her powers. This final boss battle consists of four different phases, which is a huge reason in why it's number one on the list. You face each era and style of Ganon, making it by far the most satisfying final battle within the series. The battle starts off with Ganon possessing Zelda and using her body to face Link. Okay, so this is completely unexpected, but this is Ganon's puppet! Zelda, and I can't actually move. Okay, that was weird. But, yeah, so this is something I'm sure none of us expected. You have to fight Zelda herself, but Ganon has taken control of her. And she's doing something that we uh, are pretty used to from previous Zelda games. Playing volleyball! Yeah! Let's do this! Volleyball with the ball of light. Deflecting her blasts with the Master Sword, Ganon is unable to reside in her body. Escaping it, forming himself into the Dark Beast Ganon, using his Twilight powers to face Link. So, I start off by hitting him and then trying to- oh, I was gonna try to roll out of it, but yeah, you can go ahead and then attack his stomach. So, there are two ways to do it. One, uh, attacking it like that, where you, uh, use your arrows to attack the centerpiece, or the other way, and I'm assuming this is how the game wants us to do it, and I'm actually going to do it this way because it makes the most sense, and plus I feel like I should show this off. What I mean by that is uh, you want to use your beast form, and you're going to use Midna's uh, push feature like this, whole day, and then you want to toss Ganon to the left or to the right, and then you can attack him. What's cool is you can actually munch on his belly here. <laughs> and then just go ham. With Link's beast powers and Midna's help, they are able to seize him with ease. With Ganon having no other option, he tries to destroy the castle and rampages on horseback. This forces Link and Zelda to team up as they ride on an opponent to knock down Ganon. Okay, so yes, it is time to fight Ganondorf on horseback. And uh, it is actually pretty uh, easy. All right, here we go. I'm able to position myself, perfect. Uh, Ugh. Nice, got another hit. And I'm in, again, the perfect position to maybe hit him. Uh, yes, we'll be able to get another attack on him before he summons anybody. Perfect. And Ganondorf. After successfully doing so, the final phase of this final battle takes place. Similar to Ocarina of Time, Zelda must watch from the side as Link and Ganon duel face to face. This results in a satisfying sword on sword battle, with Ganondorf using the same Sage's sword that they attempt to execute him with. Dark Lord Ganondorf, a one on one brawl. Okay, he wasn't even moving. Let's go ahead and do this! Oh, okay, I didn't mean to do that. Let's actually just try this again. There we go. And we're chancing. And then you just gotta go ahead and spam A as much as you can, and now we can get as many attacks as we can get on him, and that's the whole gist of the battle. Uh, you want a chance with him, and then go ham! <laughs> what is happening? Oh jeez, I actually already knocked him on the floor, that was perfect. I actually love the way this battle works out, but there are many ways to cheese him. Actually, one of the ways is to uh, not get hit there, but well, let me show you guys once again. The easiest way to deal with this is not to get kicked, though. Try to have him miss the kick by you hugging onto him, and then go for some more strikes. I could try to make this epic for you guys, and you know, make it like a close battle, where I could just really show you guys how I should do it, and uh, defeat him immediately. So, yeah, as you can see, infinite strikes and well, get it! You've been stabbed! But with Link, the Master Sword, and his courage, he's able to overcome Ganon's power, eventually knocking him down before delivering the final blow. 
This battle shows Ginnon in many different scenarios, with multiple phases. By far the best display of a final battle against the Demon King. You get references from most previous battles against Ganon all in one. And seeing Ganon die standing still, while knowing it's over, the feeling is still so eerie. Granted, it's not like it matters, cause history will repeat itself again. We have overcome the same evil again and again, a battle that has repeated itself throughout Hyrule's history. But what was your favorite battle throughout the series? I want to display LP footage from our past experiences against Ganon to show our journey together against each battle. So what do you guys think of this sort of video? Would you like to see more? Let me know! I know this is a lot different from my other countdowns, but I thought it'd be really cool to incorporate LPs with countdowns, so please let me know what you guys think. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, and let me know what else you'd want to see in the comments. As always, I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one.